in this video we will be demonstrating a case of tubeless prone pcnl in a patient with multiple renal stones generally whenever you have multiple stones in the kidney you might need more than one puncture however if the system is favorable sometimes all the stones can be cleared with a single track that is what we are showing in this case a 26 year old young female presented with left flank pain for almost a year on evaluation her serum creatinine was normal so she underwent initial evaluation with a non contrast ct kub which showed a partial stagon stone with associated multiple calcial stones in the left kidney this is the intraoperative fluoroscopy image where you can see a pelvic stone and also multiple stones involving the inferior calyx and also few stones are seen in the middle calyx and then another stone is seen in the superior calyx as well so this patient was planned for prone pcnl so at the start of the surgery initially you can see on injecting contrast the contrast was filling up all the calyces you can see the middle calyx with the dense contrast and also part of the superior calyx also which was uh, significantly dilated when compared to other calyx now i am doing cm rotation where here you can clearly see two stones actually in the region of the mid part of the kidney they are actually seen coming outside that dense area when the cm was rotated from 0 to 30 degree so that suggests that these two stones which are seen in the middle calyx are actually lying in a separate mid posterior calyx so we have planned to puncture an inferior calyx in this case as it can offer access to the inferior calyx pelvis and also the superior calyx so it's a bullseye puncture you can see the needle in the inferior calyx so when once free flow of saline is coming uh, guide wire is passed you can see the guide wire actually going from inferior calyx into the superior calyx into the superior calyx so now we are coiling the guide wire into the superior calyx now on pulling the guide wire you can see the a, and i am started dilating the kid, the track you can see the kidney is hypermobile so sometimes in lean thin individuals the kidney is more mobile more so when you are doing a inferior calyxial puncture so here also this lady is also very lean and thin so you can see a mobile kidney there so whenever you are more dilating such kidneys it's always important to use a stiffer guide wire and then serially dilate the track by holding the guide wire firmly so here you can see i was dilating the track one by one the dilator has just now gone into the system now the elkens cannula is passed when once you have the stiffer elkens cannula it will you can have more control with this track so after the elkens cannula is passed then the metallic coaxial dilators were passed and the kidney is the track is now being dilated so make sure that you will never miss the track and slowly gradually dilate up to the calyx and not too much inside the pelvis otherwise you will injure the opposite wall so now you see i am putting the ampulla sheet there now slowly coming out now you can see the ampulla nicely placed in the inferior calyx <clears throat> so what are the tips whenever you are uh, dilating a hypermobile kidney which you have to follow so always use a stiff guide wire like a ptfe or a sensor or a zebra guide wire because it will give you a good hold on the track try to see the guide wire goes into the ureter but in the given case it didn't go into the ureter so we have to i have to be more careful while dilating such a track start with the smallest dilator from 6 french and so go slowly don't jump the dilators while dilating always keep the guide wire straight and hold it tight and of course as i said use a metallic coaxial dilator or a balloon dilator can be preferred in such situations because the track can be easily dilated with one go if you go for a balloon dilator so once in a while you will get such type of kidneys so you have to be very careful while dilating such tracks now after dilating this track you can see 
I am positioning my amplage. Uh, there is no bleeding any anywhere here. You can see a clear vision with multiple inferior calicial stones. So I am going to take the stones one by one so using the forceps. These are all rounded secondary stones. You know, you have an obstructing pelvic stone and you have multiple rounded stones here. So we are clearing the stones one by one. <coughs> so these are small stones. So that's why I am removing them through a 24 French uh, amplar sheath because the track was dilated up to 24 French. Now using the Swiss lithoclast, the larger stone was broken like this. And now we are going to clear the stones one by one. So after the inferior calicial stones are cleared, now you see the calyx is seen so clearly. So after this, now I will be slowly going up. I am searching for the pelvis, where to go. So now you see, when you did an inferior calcial puncture, uh, you have to go up to identify the pelvis. So I am slowly, now I see the pelvic stone there. Now I am positioning the amplage and the pelvic stone clearance will be started. Now you see using the lithoclast, I am breaking the stone. So always keep the frequency of the lithoclast a little bit lower. I generally keep a frequency of around 5 heads whenever you are, you are using the pneumatic lithoclast because that will break the stones uh, into a bigger fragments so that they can be cleared faster. Now this is the residual pelvic stone. So again it is also being broken with the pneumatic lithoclast and the slowly the pelvic stone is getting cleared. Now whenever you are doing uh, PCNL for a multiple stones or a large bulk, you tend to have a lot of uh, gravel or small fragments so which can be easily sucked out that is a basic uh, advantage of a PCNL over RIRS. So here the suction is faster actually whenever you are doing PCNL. So you can see all the stone fragments being sucked out. So generally I use the outer sheath of the Swiss lithoclast and I use that as a suction device. So with that I will be sucking all the fragments. So these are the middle calicial stones now because the pelvic stone is cleared. So th through the same inferior calyx I am slowly going into the middle calyx. I am clearing the stone fragments now. See these are the stones lying in the mid anterior calyx. So after clearing these stones, always go slowly, don't use too much force, slowly pull the fragments one by one. Now you see some of the residual stones came up because the mid posterior calcial stones which were seen at the initial part of the surgery where on fluoroscopy I have shown few stones lying in the mid posterior calyx. Those stones have dropped down uh, into the anterior location, anterior calcial location. So those are removed now. Now almost the middle calicial stones are also cleared. That's the inferior calyx. This is the pelvis. And now I am slowly trying to identify the superior calyx. So in this calyx, I was trying to apply suction to clear small fragments there. Now when once after this, when I entered into another calyx, just lateral to it, I could slowly enter into the uh, superior calyx. Now you see. I am entering into another calyx. Now this is the calyx which I am talking about. See, when once I entered into this calyx, I saw that hugely dilated superior calyx which was seen even on RGP. A lot of flakes are there, pus flakes which were sucked out. Then after, uh, this is the advantage of PCM. So you can even suck out all those infected material. And now the residual stones in the superior calyx were slowly getting cleared. So this is one of the stone fragment there. Now doing lithotripsy of the residual stone in the superior calyx. And then all these fragments are cleared. Now you see now I am checking once again any residual stones left. So the middle inferior and superior calyx were almost done by this time. So till this time we didn't do any fluoroscopy. Now of course endoscopically I am unable to see any other stone then when I did soloscopy you can see on the right image here there is one stone which is still there in the superior calyx lying between the 12th and 11th rib so how to identify that that so locating that stone 
using fluoroscopic and endoscopic navigation we go and slide slowly identify the stone lying in the different calyx which was this is a separate calyx actually which is opening into the infundibulum of the superior calyx so now i am bringing that stone into the area where you can break and clear them easily so i brought the stone into the pelvis now this is the inferior calyx now by keeping it in the pelvis i am going to break and clear this stone so this is the final stone which is left which i am clearing those are the, it was broken into fragments and then i am clearing the stone now you see that stone is also cleared now at the end of it just doing endoscopy to find out are there any still residual stones are left or not always it is a very important good habit at the end of the surgery go and see the pelvi ureteric junction because some of the stone fragments go and just uh, lie there which can cause obstruction in the post operative period so it's a good habit to go and see, uh, uh, inspect the upper ureter and also the pubic area that i have shown now and now i am removing the ampulla sheath there is no much of a bleeding there there is a mild ooze so i since there is no other injury we did a tubeless pcn now you can see complete clearance on the fluoroscopy image and the left one was the pre operative image coming to take home messages yes pcnl offers complete stone clearance in kidneys with stones scattered into multiple calyces provided the system is favorable in terms of being hydronephrotic because you can navigate from one calyx to other calyx if it is a hydronephrotic system and then the calycial anatomy should be favorable that means you should have a short infundibula and a wide infundibula like in this case we have entered through the inferior calyx but i could able to go into the middle calyx and also into the superior calyx because the infundibulae were shorter that's why i am able to enter into other calyces as well and then the another most important thing is selecting a proper calyx so when you select a superior calyx you can easily navigate into the rest of the systems or in some favorable systems if you even select an inferior calyx also you can go into the rest of the calyces as well like in the given case so but in this given case if i had selected a middle calyx uh, then i could might have had some difficulty so that's why collect, selecting a proper calyx is very important to achieve complete stone clearance uh, particularly in kidneys which have a favorable renal calycial anatomy thank you